I'd like to welcome you to our midweek Bible study. It's been one of those weeks as we see winter arriving again and as we've had off and on showers of snow and as we think of it, I just want us to, to realize that each and every day in, in January that we go through, we are closer to spring. I guess that's the way I look at it and I'm looking forward to spring, but we're almost through the month of January already. I'd like to welcome you tonight to our midweek Bible study. Thank you for watching and listening, and if this is your first time with us, we'd just like to say a, a special welcome to you. Tonight we would like to start our, our Bible study off as we do each and every week with a, a, a time of prayer. Uh, please again remember those in our area that have the virus. There's much that we see, much that we hear. Maybe we know of somebody... Uh, even that uh, we know uh, personally that has the virus, or maybe we are right now watching or listening and we have the virus and we're under quarantine. Well, we just pray that um, this virus would soon start to, to go the other way and, and uh, we just ask for continued prayer for those that have the virus. We also pray for protection. Um, we're just so thankful uh, for the protection that God can give to us. Please continue to remember those in our uh, in our community here that um, are struggling, whether it be through health with the virus or just through things that are taking place in their lives. We know of many that are, are struggling with some health issues such as cancer and, and just different things or recovering from, from surgeries. Uh, please remember those as uh, we come to a time of prayer. Also remember those in the front lines, our doctors, our nurses, those that have been uh, under this, uh, the pressure of this virus for many months now. We think of our schools and just want to praise God again for the administrators and teachers that have taken their time and, and really devoted their time this year, maybe more than, than even any other year, to developing new ways to teach children. And we just thank you so much for each and every one of them. We just pray for their protection. We pray for our children's protection. And as parents, as guardians, we just ask for wisdom. Pray for our churches. This is a very, as I've said each week, it becomes very difficult because of different things that are happening in our area. And pastors need wisdom on how to handle things or what to do. Um, and so please be praying for them. Let's have a word of prayer tonight as we start our midweek Bible study. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, we thank you for another night, we thank you for another uh, day in our lives, dear Lord, and as we come to you, we just praise you for guidance and direction in our lives and how that we know that you will never leave us nor forsake us and how that we can look to you in times of need. And dear Lord, many times we come to you at a time when, the, when we're praying and, and have so many needs within our lives, but dear Lord... Tonight I'd like to praise you for who you are and what you have done for each and every one of us by sending your son to the cross to, to die for us, but we serve a risen Savior. And dear Lord, how uh, appreciative we can be, how uh, we can just be overjoyed by what has taken place there, how that you did that for each and every one of us. And dear Lord, I just pray... Tonight, I pray for open hearts for what you would have for us. I pray for that person that may not know you tonight, dear Lord, that you would continue to, to guide in their lives. But maybe tonight would be a night that they would be convicted of where they're at. And, uh, dear Lord, how that the most important decision they'll ever make in their life is whether to accept you as their Savior or reject you. And we just pray for that person that may be watching or listening tonight. Dear Lord, I would also like to pray for those... Uh, in the healthcare field, I think of doctors and nurses and nurses' aides and caregivers, dear Lord. They have been exposed or been around this COVID virus from the very beginning. And dear Lord, we just pray for their continued guides and we pray as they get um, stressed, dear Lord, that um, there would be words of encouragement for them. I also pray for those that have the virus right now or, or are recovering or those people that may be quarantined. Uh, as far as uh, those that are, are needing to stay home or, or whatever the situation may be, dear Lord, we, we know that you are well aware of each and every situation. 
And we again ask for guidance and direction there. Dear Lord, we also pray for guardians and parents. And uh, dear Lord, as they make decisions each and every day for wisdom in their lives. We pray for families as this has really, as it goes on, has really started to um, deteriorate in ways, families. But it's also brought families together. And we thank you for that. We pray for husbands and wives, dear Lord, that are, are looking for wisdom and looking for direction and, and what, what would be best um, for their families. And we just pray for that. We pray for churches, dear Lord. I think of pastors that have to make decisions each and every week on being open or not open. And dear Lord, I thank you at the Mount Carmel Church that uh, we are able to, to be open this week on Sunday. And dear Lord, we pray for our morning worship service on Sunday morning that you would guide there. And Lord willing, we will be open uh, this Sunday. I also think, dear Lord, of just many prayer requests, those within our community that have uh, different health issues from cancer to, to other things, dear Lord, recovering from operations. Dear Lord, we know that you are well aware of each and every one, and we just lift them up to you today. We also pray for uh, the inauguration, dear Lord, today of a, a new president. And dear Lord, no matter where we stand, no matter where we are, as Christians, dear Lord, help us to be praying for our president. Help us to be praying for those around him. And dear Lord, we know that uh, hearts can be softened. We also know, dear Lord, that hearts can be changed. And we just pray as Christians that we would stand firm for what we believe in. And dear Lord, that we would be praying for this uh, these new ones that are in uh, positions within our government. And dear Lord, we pray that there would be a revival in this country. And as we looked at many weeks ago in your word, how the revival starts with the I in revival, and that I starts with each and every one of us. Dear Lord, a, a group of people that I failed to mention tonight are those residents in nursing homes. Dear Lord, there may be somebody watching or listening that has a, a family member that is in a nursing home, dear Lord, and it's been an up and down thing of whether they are allowed to visit or not visit, and some are, haven't been able to visit from the very beginning. But dear Lord, we pray for those residents. I pray for those taking care of them. And dear Lord, we just ask for guidance. We pray for our school children, dear Lord, as they go to school each and every day for continued uh, wisdom there. We just ask for guidance in their lives. And we thank you for teachers and administrators of these schools, dear Lord, that have been able to stay open. And when they have been able to stay open, how that they have become very creative in many, in many districts on how they're presenting uh, the schoolwork and things like that. So we just thank you for that because many times that goes unnoticed. And dear Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. And we pray for this evening and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight our, our Bible study will be found, or we're going to be looking at Scripture in the book of Jeremiah. So if you have your Bibles, if you please open to Jeremiah, we'll be looking in chapter 1 at the life of Jeremiah, but we'll be looking at it uh, over the next few weeks of just some things that took place in Jeremiah's life that we can apply to our lives. And so our Scripture is found tonight in Jeremiah chapter 1. In just a minute, I'll be reading verses 4 through verse 14. Our message tonight, or our Bible study tonight, is, is simply entitled, No Excuse. No Excuse. You know, we are good at making excuses, aren't we? We say, say things like, I don't know how. Or I didn't understand. Or maybe you have children and you hear this all the time. Or maybe you yourself have said this. I couldn't find the right tools. Or maybe we have the excuse of just blaming someone else for, for what has taken place. Well, as Christ followers, as Christians, we can find all sorts of excuses not to obey God's voice in our lives when God calls us to do something. You know, we may hear things or we may think things in our own lives as Christians like, well, it's the preacher's job to do that. Or it's not my gift. Or maybe you've heard this, or maybe you've thought this yourself. Well, I've already served. Let someone else do it. Or I'm too busy, or too tired, or too old, or maybe even too young. Tonight we would like to look again in our midweek Bible study at the life of Jeremiah. 
You know, last week we saw through Jeremiah how each one of us can rise above discouragement in our lives. And boy, it's a time in our lives right now that discouragement can come quickly. But how that Jeremiah, through everything that went on, and how that he became very discouraged, looked to the Lord, and how the Lord lifted him, rose him up above discouragement. Well, tonight we're going to see how in Jeremiah's life he had excuses like each one of us had when God called him. So if you follow along tonight, and again, if you have your Bible or someone's watching with you, uh, please um, share your Bible with them. But Jeremiah chapter 1, and we'll be looking at verse 4 through verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 1, starting in verse 4 and going through verse 14. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, A Lord God, behold, I can, cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, verse 10, See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my words to perform it. The word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is towards the north. Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. You know, as we read that passage, I hope that you were following along and maybe your translation shows or, or talks maybe in a little bit different words, but Jeremiah had every excuse ready when God, God called him to be a prophet. You know, his excuses are often our excuses for not heeding God's voice when, when he calls us. You know, in each situation there was an excuse. And with each excuse was a promise from God. And, and tonight we want to look at those excuses, some of those excuses. And then we want to look at the promises that God showed Jeremiah. The first thing that I would like us to see in our Bible study tonight as far as an excuse is found in verse 5, that the task is demanding. Let's look at verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You know, Jeremiah was called to be a prophet to the nations, not a priest like his father and his grandfather. So there was lineage there that as his father and grandfather were priests, I'm sure that Jeremiah thought, well, I'm going to be a priest too, but God called him to be a prophet. And a prophet was a chosen, authorized spokesman for God who declared God's word to the people. So it was a very important um, calling by God. A prophet was one who spoke messages to to the present that had future ramifications or what he was talking about were things that were going to happen in the future to, to those that he was speaking to. And being a prophet was more demanding than serving as a priest. You know, as we think of it, as I looked and were studying, you know, the priest's duties were predictable. Everything was written down in the law. But prophets never knew from one day to the next what the Lord would call them to say or to do. Prophets labored to change the present so the nation would have a future. In fact, in many cases, we see where prophets warned or told of things to come. Prophets addressed the whole nation many times, and usually the people they addressed 
did not want to hear the message that was given. They didn't want to hear what the prophet may have to say. So as we think of that, I want us to really realize what had happened here. How that this, what God had called Jeremiah to was so demanding. So that was an excuse. But we read the promise in verse 5. And as I think of that promise, you know, God may want you to do something you never thought you could do. But His call keeps us going when we do not want to go. And those times in our lives when we're ready to quit, that call that He gives us continues to be with us. You know, we have the promise of God's purpose. Let me just read Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5 again. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. This verse actually shows us that God knew Jeremiah, chose Jeremiah, and appointed Jeremiah. He was known by name. He was handpicked by God to serve him. This promise can give each one of us a great sense of purpose in our lives. The promise of God's purpose allows us to let go of our own plans and to receive God's plan without fear. As I think of that and I think about our lives, you know, many times we have our own plans, don't we? But God has a plan and a purpose for us as Christians, and He, he knows right where it is. And like Jeremiah, we should accept that our future is not our own. We are God's, and He has a distinct plan and purpose for our lives. Do we have that excuse, well, that's, that's kind of too hard to do? God says if He calls us, He'll be right there with us. The second excuse we find in verse 6, that my talent isn't good enough, or my ability isn't good enough. Let's look at verse 6. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. You know, Jeremiah felt he was not good enough to speak to others. He wasn't good enough to, to do that, as we would call it, public speaking. He wasn't good enough good enough and he couldn't do it to get up in front of in front of other people by the by the way as, as I think of that there was another person in in God's word that was the same way and that was Moses and we see that in Exodus chapter 4 in verse 10 where Moses said God I, I can't do that I can't I can't I don't have the ability to do that you know we're often worried about what others may think or say aren't we we're afraid of what this person may say about us or, or that person may say about us. We hear things like, surely you don't mean Brian. You must mean someone else. Or maybe you hear something like, well, he's too quiet. He can't do something like that. I know in my own life when God called me into ministry, I believed I would be inadequate for his call. In fact, for years I kind of drugged my feet and I know that God was calling me into ministry. But I also believe that through that time, he, he provided and showed me many things that I needed to be made aware of and to learn. You know, he, as I was thinking when God called me into ministry, at one point I can remember thinking, well, he must be making a mistake. It couldn't be me. He meant it to be someone else. And we know that God never makes mistakes. And I know it was a time in my life where there was a lot of frustration because I was really not following what God wanted me to do. I think it was much like what I see with Jeremiah here. You know, as we think of that, God can call us. And God helps us in many, many different ways. So we know that He is there with us if He calls us. The promise that we see here in verse 9 let me just read that. Then the Lord put forth His hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. You know, our talents may appear inadequate. We may feel like we don't... Can I use the words measure up? We hear that a lot. But God always equips those He calls. We have the promise of God's provision. And we see that in verse 9. The touch was not so much to purify as it was to inspire and to empower Jeremiah. It was symbolic of the gift of prophecy bestowed on Jeremiah. 
You know, God many times, and we can look at many examples through God's Word where God uses not the most gifted or talent, talented person, but the one He touches by His hand. God uses the most unlikely person to reach out to someone else. Maybe you've had that experience in your own life where someone has come into your life and reached out to you and after you thought about it, it was someone that was probably the most unlikely person. It's also many times the most unlikely person to do his work in a church or in a community or in a nation. We count ourselves so, so short, don't we? We count ourselves short before we allow God to work in our lives. I want us to realize tonight and to understand and never, never underestimate the power of the touch of God, especially when God does the touching and when He calls you. He will provide. He will help you through. Maybe right now He's called you to do something and you're, you're scared about doing it or you don't want to reach out or you're afraid about what somebody may say. Allow the Holy Spirit to work. The third excuse that we see in this passage of Scripture from Jeremiah is the time's not right. We see this in verse 6 again. Then said I, A Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. You know, Jeremiah said to God that he couldn't do it. It wasn't the right time. The word child or youth ordinarily is talking about a young, unmarried man in his teens or his early 20s. But as I was studying for this Bible study, I found that most scholars think that that Jeremiah was really around 20 to 25 at the time of his calling. His reply is not so much about his age, but more about him feeling immature. He wasn't ready or, or feeling inferior, I can't do it. Or maybe he wasn't experienced and he said, I don't have the experience. Or maybe it was he was intimidated by what God had called him to do. But we see the promise in verse 7 and verse 8. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. God's call may come at an inopportune time in our lives, but He looks for you to do it alone. He, he I mean... He, excuse me, He doesn't look for you to do it alone. Because we have the promise that God's presence is with us. You know, as I read those verses, we see where He was telling Jeremiah that I am right there. I am with you. Because He said in that promise, before Jeremiah could experience God's presence, he had to go where God sent him. Speak what God told him. And really not think about fear. You know, someone once said that when God calls us to do something, He does not give us a road map to follow and then leave us. God walks with us. He gives us the strength to follow through with what He has called us to do. You know, what a difference it makes knowing that when we are being sent, someone is going with us. We know we do not have to walk the the lonesome road alone, or, or do the task alone, because He is with us. That is a great promise that we see here, and as Jeremiah, as he was pointing out to the Lord, I can't do this, it's not the right time, I'm not ready, I, I, I can't do it. God tells us again, be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. The fourth excuse that I want us to see is in verse 13. The teaching is dangerous. The Lord did not give Jeremiah a joyful message to deliver, to announce to the people, but a tragic message of judgment. And unfortunately, Jeremiah would be misunderstood. Probably he would be persecuted. We saw that last week when he delivered the message that God gave him and how that he was persecuted for it, but how that the desire in his heart to continue what the Lord wanted helped him through that. We saw last week where he was arrested and imprisoned, but how that God was with him. 
You know, more than once in Jeremiah's life, he was threatened. The people did not want to hear the truth. And as we think in our lives, you know, many times people don't want to hear the truth. But maybe God is, is speaking to you right now, telling you or, or, or wanting you to go to reach out to somebody. You know, Jeremiah told them plainly that they were defying the Lord, disobeying the law and headed for judgment. God used the image of a boiling pot to communicate His coming wrath. We read this in verse 13 where it says, And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is towards the north. You know, Jewish homes would have a, a large, wide mouth washing or cooking pot, and that's why he used that illustration. The unusual thing about the pot Jeremiah saw was that it was not level. It was tilted away from the north. The pot could at any moment spew its boiling contents towards the south, scalding the people of Judah. The pot represented the nation of Babylon that would invade and could conquer Israel. And the reason for the judgment was Israel's idolatry and rebellion against God. You know, Jesus' teaching contained mercy. It contained judgment. It contained grace and punishment. Jesus' teachings were dangerous too. In fact, it was His teaching that cost Him His life. As we think of the life of Jesus and how that the teachings that he had cost him his life on that cross. But the promise we see here in verses 18 and verse 19. What God says through us may be dangerous, but God gives us the strength to endure. You know, we have the promise of God prevailing in our lives. Let's look at verses 18 and verse 19. For behold, I have made thee this day a defensed city, and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Notice some of the building terms used here in these two verses. It talks about a defense city or a fortified city. It talks about iron pillars and bronze walls. We see iron pillars and brazen walls or bronze walls. And they are solid and unshakable. And God was reassuring Jeremiah that they would attack, but they would not prevail. You know, the person as we think, as we apply that to our lives, the person who stands with God will prevail. You know, we're in times right now where we think, boy, I, I don't know how I can go through this. I don't know what I can do. But as Christians, if we stand strong, God will prevail. We know the end of what happens in, in life and how that God will win. But God will prevail. You know, someone once said, one with God is a majority. Alone we are helpless. With God we prevail. You know, this is something that is important as Christians today to think about. The fifth excuse I want us to see is, do I have to go now? Verse 17 of this passage, God was expecting immediate action from Jeremiah. And God said in verse 17, Thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before him. In Jeremiah's day, the men had to tie their loose robes together with a belt to run or to work. Jeremiah was in for a struggle with what God had asked him to do. He had kind of what we would call a fight on his hands. So as we read this verse, it says, gird up your loins. Today we would say kind of roll up your sleeves and dig in. God called Jeremiah to act. He was called to go out among the people. He was called to deliver a message. And we know that Jeremiah would not be welcomed or would be accepted. He would be going to make people angry with what they heard in the message he was delivering. But we see the promise. 
the promise is found in that passage or that verse that I just read. God expects obedience immediately. If we do not, we are in danger of what could happen in our lives. We have the promise of God's power. In verse 17, let me just read again. Thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. But be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before thee. Immediate obedience is the only appropriate response when God calls. Has God called you? If He has, then He will fulfill His purpose in you. He will equip you. He will enable you. He will protect you. He will accompany you. Are you willing to obey His commands? We also realize that He will be there for us and He will protect us. Are you willing to share the word that God has placed in your life? If you are, and God has called you, and I, I, I don't know your hearts tonight. You don't know my heart, but God does. If He is calling you, He will accomplish His purpose no matter what other people may think around you or no matter how people respond. In the life of Jeremiah, first we saw that Jeremiah didn't know what to do. It wasn't him. It couldn't be him. He, it was too difficult. God showed him that it wasn't too difficult and that he was calling him to be a prophet. Well, then he said, I, I can't do it. I'm inadequate. Boy, we do that in our lives too. Boy, I, I can't do that. God's calling somebody else. Or, or why would He pick me? Or why would He call me to do that? He called Jeremiah. And again, he came back to Jeremiah and said, I am with you each and every step of the way. But then I can hear Jeremiah saying, God, it's not the right time. I can't do it right now. And again, God told Jeremiah, you can. Allow me to walk through you and with you. And then Jeremiah got to the point of saying, well, maybe not now, Lord. Maybe, maybe in another month, maybe in another year. That's kind of what he said. And, and we do that too, don't we? And God said again, I am with you. I'll be there. I will protect you. I will guide you. I will help you each and every step of the way. I think this passage of Scripture is really a great passage for us to think about. No excuses. If God is calling us to do something, maybe it's to, to reach out to a neighbor, maybe it's to, to pray with somebody, maybe it's to call a, a family member that you've been struggling with, or maybe it's to become part of a local church and to become part of that church by, by being active within it. Or maybe God's calling you into ministry. You know, God called me into ministry many years ago, and I did the same thing that Jeremiah did. Had all kinds of excuses why I couldn't. But God continued. And I am so thankful that I did away with the excuses and did what God called me to do. Is God calling you tonight? If He is, are you willing to throw those excuses away and to follow Him? Let's close in a word of prayer. Dearly Father, we thank you for tonight, and dear Lord, as we looked at this passage of Scripture in, in Jeremiah, and as I kind of made a, a short series here, dear Lord, on Wednesday nights in our Bibles study that just talks about do something. You know, sometimes in our lives we get so bogged down, and dear Lord, in our lives there's been much in our lives with discouragement, and much in our lives to, to hold us back, and Satan loves no more than to to place discouragement in our lives or to, to place doubt in our lives or to place that area in our lives where, God, you can't be calling me. You have called each and every one of us, dear Lord, and you have a plan and a purpose for us. Help us to look to you for that plan and purpose. Help us as Christ followers to be willing to follow you. And dear Lord, maybe today that, that you are calling somebody to be praying for somebody else or to be a prayer warrior or to to reach out in some small way to someone else. Or maybe you're calling somebody today into ministry. Dear Lord, I just ask, dear Lord, if that call has been placed in someone's life, that they would feel an uneasiness, 
until they follow you and understand that you are with them each and every step of the way. Or maybe someone right now has been, you've been calling to be a teacher in a, in a church or a, a Sunday school setting or, or to do something to become more active in a local church, dear Lord. We need workers within our churches. Dear Lord, help us not to have excuses why we can't do it. But help us to look as Jeremiah did. And each and every excuse that Jeremiah placed, you had an answer. And you have an answer for each and every one of our excuses. Dear Lord, if you call us to do something, you will not leave us alone. I also pray tonight for that person that may not know you. That tonight is a night that maybe they're thinking about all this going on. And dear Lord, I pray if they have a a question that they would call the church. I would love to talk to them about it. But dear Lord, tonight may, may be a night that changes their life forever. And they can do that no matter where they're at by asking forgiveness of their sins. Understanding and realizing what was done on the cross by the shed blood. But also understanding that we serve a risen Savior that is coming back for us and asking Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior of their life and to come into their heart and have faith and trust in Him. Dear Lord, we thank You for our study tonight. We thank You for the life of Jeremiah and how that we can apply it much to our lives. And dear Lord, how that we really don't have any excuses why we can't serve You. We thank You for this night and uh, this passage of Scripture that we looked at. We pray for safety and guidance throughout this week, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to thank you for watching and listening tonight. And if you've been building excuses in your life, we find, saw through the life of Jeremiah that there really is no excuse in our life if God is calling us. Is He calling you? I'd like to just thank you for watching and listening. And if you don't have a church family, I'd like to invite you to come be part of our church family. The Mount Carmel Church, we're located at 3023 Clover Run Road, Mahaffey, Pennsylvania. Or maybe you have a question about our church or something you heard tonight. Please feel free to call the church and I will return your call. 814-277-4435. I would love to talk to you. If you don't have a church that you call home, we would love to have you come and be part of our church family. Thank you for watching and listening tonight. We really don't have excuses when God calls us, do we? Jeremiah did, and God showed each and every excuse that he had that he was there for him. He's there for you, and he's there for me. Thank you for watching, and may God bless.